Breaking tonight, the man who changed your health care system forever is now pushing to change your neighborhood. That is, if Uncle Sam feels it is not inclusive enough. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. The Obama administration calls it a plan to diversify neighborhoods and promote fair housing choice. Critics say this is the most radical, politically explosive change President Obama has attempted in his six-plus years in office, calling it social engineering of the worst kind. The feds now want to take billions in housing grant money and condition it on communities proving that they are sufficiently inclusive and diverse. They want to look around the area you live and decide if your town is diverse enough. If not, the feds will order low-income housing or else much of your federal funding for your town will dry up. Experts say this is more than an attempt to change the way America's neighborhoods look. It may also be an attempt to change the way they vote. Joining us now, nationally syndicated radio host Richard Fowler and Fox News contributor and former chief presidential speechwriter to George W. Bush, Mark Thiessen. We begin tonight with Mark. And so, Mark, this, this is being described as something that President Obama has had in the works for years, but has only now found the guts to actually put out there as a housing and urban development proposed final rule because his term is almost done and this is the time to do it. The last thing on the list, change the neighborhoods. Absolutely. Look, this is what happens when you take a community organizer and put him in the White House. He wants to organize your community from Washington, D.C. I mean, this is an insidious idea. What they are take, do, trying to do is engage in social engineering of local communities from Washington, D.C. They're going to take data, collect data on the racial makeup, social makeup, economic makeup of communities, mm -hmm. and then either bribe or, or blackmail them into changing those, their zoning policies. I mean, this is, this is a fundamental assault on freedom, on local government, on the principles that this country was built on. They don't want, quote, unequal neighborhoods. Unequal neighborhoods. They, it, they think too many com communities are too white, too privileged, with too big McMansions, too many big McMansions. And they, they want to diversify the communities, whether the communities want it or not. Well, you know, the way to diversify communities, we believe in diversifying communities, too, as conservatives. The way you do that is through economic opportunity. The way you do that is, is you create opportunities for people at the bottom of the economic ladder to afford housing in these communities. It's not by building more affordable housing in affluent communities. It's by helping more Americans afford housing in affluent communities. And right now, the problem is, is that people at the bottom in the Obama economy can't get ahead. The reality but is, what, is that but, under... But, but wait, but what they're saying is that the way you live, what, what your town looks like, the, the, the racial makeup of it, the opportunity that is there has a real effect on families. And that they're saying it, it, too often families of color live in downtrodden, socioeconomically depressed cities, whereas the whites live in these affluent suburbs around those cities, and that it's having a real negative effect on the, on the families of color. And, and much in the same way Afri uh, affirmative action is meant to lift up those families of color by gi giving them more of a running start than stopping from start, starting from stop, uh, this is supposed to do the same in a neighborhood. Yeah, but the problem isn't the affluent communities, it's the downtrodden communities and the policies that have created those downtrodden communities. I mean, we've talked a lot on this show about uh, Baltimore, right? And the reality is the people who are living in, in depressed areas of Baltimore it's not because they're not living in affluent America area communities of, uh, of Baltimore because there's racism in the zoning boards. They're living there because they don't have opportunity. They don't have jobs. They don't have hope. They're stuck in failing public schools. In Baltimore, African-American me young men have a 37 percent unemployment rate. You're not going to move into an affluent neighborhood if you don't have a job or if you don't have an education. So the problem is not that these communities are keeping people out, is that our system is keeping these people well, down by happen, not giving though? them jobs and opportunity. But, but what is going to happen I mean, if this rule passes they go in they take a look at how, how your community looks how, how white is it how you know diversified is it how rich is it and if it doesn't meet with uncle sam's approval then they can come in and what it's low-income housing it's which is controversial because sometimes that can lower the you know housing values in a community that you know they weren't anticipating it um and, and what i mean what else what would it look like 
it's 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 not going to happen i think because there's going to be a massive revolt in this country against this i mean this is this is just such an assault on what we stand for as a country to have washington dc coming into local communities zoning and housing those are local decisions that local communities make that's not the job of the of the house department of housing and urban development to micromanage thousands and thousands of municipalities and say there needs to be affordable so, housing here needs to be affordable okay, but housing gonna, there it looks like they're going to try to push this through as a rule and the question i have for you is how does this play in 2016 politics it's going to be very important in 2016 politics for a couple of reasons. Number one, because uh, the person who's implementing this, you know, Julian Castro, the HUD secretary, is on everybody's short list to be Hillary Clinton's vice presidential nominee. Ah. Uh, so, so, so he this if he get, if he gets tapped to be Hillary's running mate, this is going to be a very, very central issue. Mm -hmm. And secondly, because right now what they're going to do if this rule goes through and if it's not blocked by Congress, they're going to start collecting the data first before they can implement it. It's not going to get implemented under Barack Obama. The next president is going to implement it. So. This is a major issue. Is Hillary Clinton going to re-engineer your community if she is elected and president? And she's going to say the Julian Republicans Castro? are against communities of color. She's going to say that the, that's the exactly what they're going to try and flight, say. Uh, the, those folks who, who pursued white flight wanted to stay that way, and they don't want people of color moving in next door to them. And that's racist and discriminatory. That's a very important point you make, and this is why Republicans have to be very careful how they handle this, because they want to portray Republicans as the party of the rich who want to protect the white suburbs against people of color and poverty uh, coming into their neighborhoods. We need to make clear that we want – our principle is every American of every race, creed, and color should be able to live wherever they want, as, but we need to create opportunities so they I can afford it. to live wherever they want. This is a fascinating issue, and it, it's, it's very interesting that this is apparently one of President Obama's prize, prize issues, and he saved it till now. Thanks, Mark. Richard Fowler. Thanks. President Obama making a new bid to diversify wealthy neighborhoods. He wants to use taxpayer money to do it. Congressman Paul Gosar, Republican from Arizona, is here. Uh, Congressman, it looks to me like this is an attempt to shoehorn people of color using taxpayer money into housing within wealthy white neighborhoods. You approve of this? Well I don't approve of it. That's why I've offered the amendment, Stuart. This is microengineering down at the planning and zoning level that should be left to go local governments. This is about what they want to make the fabric of America look like, their way or the highway. Can you stop it by using the financial mechanisms within Congress? Absolutely. That's what we have to get good at, Stuart, by defunding the mechanism for the implementation of the rule. That's why Congress had the power of the purse and the rule of law behind it. And that's what we intend to do. And this will become a big issue because if the government can supersede uh, local uh, planning and zoning, they can do anything. And that's, that's why this is outright egregious. Um, it, th I mean, the argument could be made that it's good to interact with people of all religions, faiths, colors, ethnicities. It's good to interact with America, which has a very diverse face and that this enhances that meeting of the minds and meeting of people all together. Something wrong with that? Now, Stuart, that's not the case. Since the late 1960s, this has been the law of the land, is that you can't uh, hold people of preference or religion or, re or, or color, uh, hold them uh, in diverse aspects of, of putting them in a community. This just takes it a step further. This isn't about... Uh, uh, what's right or wrong, this is about this, this federal government doing this and usurping the local jurisdictions on planning and zoning. This but, is Mike macroengineering at the largest scale. But the left will argue that people in this community, wealthy communities, are keeping out people of color, not allowing them in, and that in itself is a form of discrimination. They'll have to prove it on a case-by-case -case basis, Stuart, because you know, we have to challenge the, the left on this one everywhere and every time that they try to, to utilize this. Uh, there may be exceptions to the rule, but we don't change a rule due to uh, exceptions. What you do is you follow the rule of law, and that's what the rule of law from the 60s say. You cannot have preferential aspects based on religion, race, or, or uh, creed. Uh, so from this standpoint, this is a total overreach by this administration to change the whole fabric of this country. Congressman Paul Gosar, thank you very much for joining us, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, thank you. Stuart. Thanks, Stuart. Sir. For more on all of this, the legal aspects, perhaps, all rise. Judge Andrew Napolitano is here. What's the legal aspects to this, uh, Judge? You know, Stuart, I, I, I think there are profound constitutional implications here, and they are the following. One, can the president spend discretionary funds 
in a manner never even contemplated by the Congress when it gave him the money to spend. Two, can the president use his, I'll use a phrase that you and I like to use a lot, his pen and his phone to regulate an area of government totally, exclusively, historically, and indisputably local and not federal? And three, what to do about a president who doesn't respect the confines of the Constitution and thinks he can social engineer things as, as local as who can build what building on what city block. Look, the way they're going to do this, Stuart, is to offer money to local municipalities to change the zoning laws. Yeah. Now, if you and I walked into a government office and said, change those rules and I'll pay you for it, we'd be arrested by the FBI for bribery. But when the federal government does it, the Supreme Court says it's an acceptable way for them to, to get laws changed in an area that they don't have authority over under the Constitution. Mm -hmm. It's reprehensible, and I hope the congressman that you just had on and his colleagues will stop it. I don't see a racial implication here. Mm -hmm. This is an Orwellian overreach by the Senate central government into an area exclusively in, uh, under the control of the locals since 1791. <laughs> There's obviously when people spoke with British accents. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was coming. <laughs> yeah. A real fast question. I want to get Guy Benson into this in a second for the political angle. One last question to you, Judge, if I may. Is social engineering generally frowned upon by, by people like you who are constitutional scholars. I mean, in other words, does the Constitution allow us, allow the government to engineer our society? You know, it's a, it's a very good question. The first part of your question is, of course it is frowned upon by small government people who believe that the Constitution means what it says and the federal government can only regulate in the 16 areas delegated to it under the Constitution. But the Supreme Court has allowed the federal government to spend money in areas outside those 16 areas and attach strings to that money and the effect of complying with those strings is a regulation. That's what terrifies me is that the Supreme Court may say, look, they could have rejected these federal dollars, but they accepted them. Now they have to accept the strings that come with them.